Scooper Andy McMillan and Scooper Neil Duffy return to the defence. They are the only over 30s in the team. David Craig and Neil Scally drop to the bench. It wouldn't be like Gordon DL not to attack. Their main threat comes from wide boys Mickey Reynolds and Gary Teal. The ambitious plan is to pin back Reina and Newman. Ayr's top scorer with 12 goals is Glenn Hurst. But their top scorer in this competition is Neil Tarrant. The 20-year-old striker is on loan from Aston Villa, who are already through to the English FA Cup final. Keeping a close eye on Tarrant will be Rangers captain Lorenzo Amoruso, who's been taking up a fair bit of back-page space this week with talk of a transfer away from Ibrox. Sounds unlikely, and he's where he normally is in the Rangers team. There are two changes from the side which beat Dundee United on Tuesday night. Giovanni van Bronckhorst and Seb Rosenthal are back in. Two Guy and Billy Dodds drop out to join Neil McCann on an impressive-looking bench. Van Bronckhorst is back where he normally is at the heart of the midfield, along with Viduka and Moore. He's a strong candidate for Player of the Year. Rosenthal links up with 18-goal Rod Wallace in attack. And the referee for the first of the Tenant Scottish Cup semi-finals is John Robotham. the underdogs who get the match started the bookies make Rangers 9-1 to one on to make it a return trip to Hamden and an opportunity for Neil Tarrant right at the start of the match and it was Scott Wilson who was going back trying to counter Tarrant's run and he stumbled at the edge of the area threats from Andrei Kinchelskis heading for the byline kept that in seemed to be heading for the hands of the goalkeeper Rovda but it was cut out before it got that far signs here of a few nerves from Mark Campbell who concedes a corner kick but he might well have let that rest with his goalkeeper Van Bronckhorst Back to Kinchelskis, on the left foot, struck it well. But that's good positioning from the Norwegian. And a good solid save, which will do him a lot of good in the early stages of this big match, and only his second match for Air United. Rubda's kick out, flicked on by Glenn Hurst, and what a chance that was for Gary Teal. Four minutes gone, this was route one football from here, United, a massive clearance, well up was Hurst to get in ahead of Amoruso, Teal got some room to have the shot at goal, and one wonders how much the first division side will regret that the chance wasn't taken. It's Mickey Reynolds threatening this time, Wilson's clearance not convincing. Rangers rocking at the back. Wilson thumps the ball clear, Neil Duffy nods it out. The advocate will be unimpressed with the way Rangers have started here defensively. Good touch from Tarrant, second one wasn't too good, trying to link up with Hurst. Ferguson's pass through for Alberts, can't get it under control. Now Reynolds, like Hurst, former player with Normally Gemley in England it's a rocky stop from Rangers here's Reynolds too high he's disappointed that he failed to hit the target Rangers all over the place in the opening few minutes a wayward header from Amoruso Alberts could make nothing of it and the chance fell for Reynolds and he knows that he should have done much better here. Chances coming for Air United, thick and fast in the first six minutes. There's fury written all over the face of Dick Advocat. McMillan aimed at first. Amaruso wins the header. Alberts is injured, and Mickey Reynolds has possession. Outside Newman, it's a good run from Reynolds. Three in the middle to aim at. It's blocked by Van Bronckhorst. And at the moment, if you're to learn from outer space in between, one team is from the Premier League and one from the First Division. 
I think you would go for the Premier team in yellow. They've had all the pressure so far. It's they are carving out the chances. And Rangers looking very nervous indeed. Neil Duffy is up. So too is Mark Campbell. Chested away by Wilson. Long ball from Alberts. Good play from Robertson. Macmillan. Hurst. First touch wasn't great, but he won it back. turn and pass from Van Bronckhorst there was Newman the best part of 10,000 air supporters here and they intend to jo enjoy their day out, this equals their best ever run in the competition, they lost to Rangers in the semi-finals of 1973 and have they had an encouraging start to this match good turn from John Robertson played in for Neil Tarrant one buck by Arena. Newman, long ball for Rod Wallace. He's escaped and in for Rosenthal. Rangers have the lead. And there are 11 very relieved players out there. 18 minutes gone. Seb Rosenthal's third goal of the season and Air United must feel cheated to be one goal down they've started so well, Rangers have started so badly but Rod Wallace wasn't picked up by the air defence and he set up Rosenthal for what was a pretty straightforward finish through the legs of Rudd and 1-0 for the holders Rosenthal again, trying to return the compliments to Rod Wallace. Revved up, quickly off his line to grab it. Reynolds away from Alberts. He made George Alberts look very sluggish indeed. And Alberts fortunate not to see a yellow card for this if there was contact, which there appeared to be, trod on the heel of Reynolds. free kick aimed at Neil Duffy the header down for Hurst a miss hit right on the penalty spot and that was a chance for the top scorer set up by a towering header from Duffy and here was where he wanted to make contact but it just bubbled into the arms of Kloss Mark Campbell knocking it up in the air not the best idea when it's Mickey Reynolds underneath but Tarrant Inside then outside, good cross ball, in went Teal, and a good effort from Marvin Wilson. He's so disappointed as the little midfielder, he realised that was a chance as the ball dropped invitingly for him. It was Reina's header, struck it with the outside of the right foot, but Stefan Kloss was well positioned to make the save. Gordon Dale always very positive in these sort of situations and he made a decision to have a go at Rangers McMillan for Tarrant Amaruso's header Shepard tried to nod that down for Reynolds Newman's surging run halted Hurst slipped but kept the ball Tarrant and it's Hurst again, what a chance that was for Glenn Hurst. Set up perfectly by Neil Tarrant. And he will view this as a golden opportunity to put air on level terms. It bounced in front of him. He tried to loft it over Stefan Claus, but he got too much contact. And it was over the crossbar. A tremendous chance that for Hurst to make it 1-1.
for Newman, sizing things up in Wintman Bronckhorst, Kincelskis on to the left foot. It's 2-0. This could turn into a cruise for Rangers now. Two goals ahead. 26 and a half minutes gone. And Ayer, who contributed so much to this match, are now two goals behind. Turned away from Gary Teal. And it was an easy finish for Konchelskis. Goal number five of the season for the winger. And he just passed that into the net away from Rivda in from Alberts to Wallace Newman, Rosenthal Newman again, wouldn't quite come for the shot Barry Ferguson deflected touched away by Rivda and played off Konchelskis for the goal kick he scored with the help of a deflection last Saturday and it was almost same again for the Scotland midfielder as the ball was laid back to him deflected and Rivda was at full length to make the save Alberts with the ball through deflected on to Rod Wallace here's the chance for the third goal and the match winner in last season's Tennant Scottish Cup final gets his first goal of this cup campaign and it's number three of the first half for Rangers in off the inside of the post and the torture of Air United in this 40, first 45 minutes is complete a deflected pass from Albert the spin of which deceived Neil Duffy it reared up off the pitch and allowed Rod Wallace the home in on goal he tends to take these chances and that's his 19th goal of the season 3-0 for Rangers minutes added at the end of the first half and that is the half-time whistle if you're an Air United supporter you'll be crying in your half-time cup of tea but how well the first division side played and here was a golden opportunity for Gary Teal set up by the head flick from Glenhurst put his effort wide and while Air were missing their chances Rangers were taking theirs the air defence opened up all too easily from their point of view and Rod Wallace set up Rosenthal with the first goal of the game 18 minutes gone this another chance for Air United Tarrant's pass and lofted away over the top of the crossbar by Hurst then Rangers struck again the head flick from Van Bronckhorst Konchelskis took a moment and then simply passed the ball away from Rivda and into the air net for Rangers second goal number three a cruel bounce for Neil Duffy, in went Wallace, 19 goals for the season for the Rangers striker, but Air United will feel they deserve better. First half scoreline is Air nil, Rangers 3. Rangers get the second half underway with two substitutions in place, Rod Wallace and George Alberts are off on uh, the Scotland pair of Billy Dodds in possession and Neil McCarr and immediately Dodds with a shot on goal inside the first minute after the restart holding off the challenge from McMillan not a great test of Rubda Kinchelskis Taking on Robertson, turned in field for Rosenthal. Good hits. And touched away by Rudder. That was a good hit from the Chilean striker. And well read by the goalkeeper. Good control from Tarrant. Onto it comes Marvin Wilson. So close to pulling the goal back for here. He felt frustrated at the first half volley, which course saved. This was a much better chance. It's all gone a bit quiet around Hamden, with Rangers seemingly cruising 
into next month's cup final. Don's holding off Campbell. Now Kinchelskis. Gets it back from Marina. And Billy Dodds taps in number four. That was all so easy. It started with a little bit of showboating from Kanchelskis. And it looked entirely justified at the end. Uh, the Air United defence was unzipped. And Billy Dodds hasn't scored too many easier goals than this. Reina involved. Kanchelskis again. And from two yards out, Billy Dodds knocks in his sixth goal for Rangers. And that's 4-0 for the holders. The back heel for McCann, for Rosenthal. Two guy finds Dodds. Neil McCann again. Now it looks to be only a question of how many Rangers will score. Kinchelskis on to the left foot. Would have been spectacular had it found the net. The players waiting in the middle, but for once Kinchelskis deciding to have a crack himself. Rosenthal's pass. In goes Billy Dodds. That's five. It's so easy for Rangers now. as if they can score goals at will this in sharp contrast to the way the match started and it was so competitive and it was here United who had the upper hand but the first division side have collapsed since then and that's 4 minutes left and a second half threesome for the Scotland striker and he'll hand a lot of the credits for this one to Kinchelskis the pace to get away from Robertson the accuracy with the cross and the dipping header from Dodds over the head of the Norwegian keeper 3 for Dodds and that makes it 6 for Rangers with the reverse pass aimed at Rosenthal just too pacey didn't have too much chance of getting a second goal there Rosenthal 30 seconds left in the 90 minutes Newman onside is Neil McCann could it be number 7 it surely must be for Rosenthal 7 up for Rangers And the demolition of Air United is surely now complete. Made the run from inside his own half, McCann, so there was never a question of him being flagged. And then it was just a question of who was going to apply the finishing touch. A second goal for Seb Rosenthal in the match, his fourth of the season, 7-0 Rangers. of the match the Cavicat sees his team so unimpressive at the beginning in the end 
it was plain sailing the handshake of some consolation towards Gordon Diel and there's the hat-trick hero of the second half Billy Dodds Seb Rosenthal scored as well with Air United at that stage well out of the match they contributed so much early on they had chances which they failed to take and in the end the punishment from Rangers was brutal the Air fans will have certainly appreciated the first half hour and the way their team played but in the end mercilessly swept aside by Billy Dodds and company Rangers through to the Tennant Scottish Cup final and through in the end in some style by seven goals to nil Dick it was easy in the end but certainly not at the beginning no you're totally right I think the first 20 minutes uh, they created 300% chances and uh, we were very lucky that they didn't score uh, they get the chances and we, we scored uh, the goal on the break yeah, and after that, uh, the 2-0, the 3-0, the and the game was over. But, uh, it, uh, again, the way we started the first 20 minutes, uh, fortunately for us, it worked out the right way with 7-0, but uh, I, give the, I have to give, give the credit to, uh, to Air as well, because uh, they play with 4 for 2 they tried to score the goals, the, they played open. Yeah, OK, if it's 3-0 or 7-0, that, that's not that important, but uh, all the credit to them as well. Gordon, how unlucky do you feel? Um, I feel, I feel down, Rob, because I thought the first half uh, my team were absolutely excellent. Um, we've gifted them three poor goals, um, and that's a disappointing thing. You can't give Rangers goals like that because they're a quality side, and second half we tired a little bit and you know get a wee bit ragged. But I thought we probably created more chances against Rangers in the first 30 minutes than a lot of sides have all season. You couldn't have hoped to have played much better straight from kickoff. No, I mean we had a chance. I think nearly after 10 seconds, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, I think it spun off Taz's outside of the foot and uh, went wide. That would have uh, set us up nicely. But there was myself and a few others who had chances as well. We didn't take them. Do you even had time to stand on the ball and give a little salute? What was that all about? <laughs> no, I'm uh, looking forward. Because Billy Dodds and uh, Sarah present are too small. Did uh, you get a better view from on top of the ball? <laughs> defensive too big in the Iron United. I'm see. Where's Billy? Where's uh, Sarah? You found him okay? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's after this moment to score, it's, uh, it's a good, good moment. You must have looked at the action at the other end in the first 20 to 25 minutes and thought, well, we could be onto something here. Yeah, um, I'm starting to dream about the final after 20 minutes, but uh, no way. You're obviously happy to be in the final, but presumably you don't take an awful lot of satisfaction, do you, from that game today? No, only the result. And uh, probably a lesson that we have to say about, about what's happened in the first half. You can't do that to a Premier League team. Rangers through to their 47th Scottish Cup final for Air United. The dream is over. And it's so sad, Gordon, to see it end in, in such an emphatic manner, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be a great day for Air and a great day out. And it started so well for them. But uh, I thought Rob was being a bit harsh with Dick Avakar saying you can't be satisfied <laughs> with that performance. Just well, he is a perfectionist. But, but they've just won 7-0 in a semi-final. I mean, it's unbelievable. And a lot of people suggesting that it might have been close and Air might have ran them close. But it was a bizarre game in respect to how it went because the fact was that Air did start well. Yeah, I mean, Gordon Dale made the point that, that few SPL sides will have put Rangers under such pressure as Air United did, and they've only got themselves to blame, haven't they? Yeah, exactly. It was a combination of uh, Air doing well and, and creating openings and Rangers being slack right from the kick-off. You see here, Dick Avakar must have been wondering what kind of afternoon it was going to be. Rangers already slack, just a long ball, played down to the channel by McMillan. You see here, the Tarn gets on to it. Scott Wilson falls over, and I, I, there was no flag went up, there was it's no it's foul given. Neil Tarn assumes that he's given away a, a foul Exactly, because there's no, there's no need for him to shoot there. I think he just feels that that probably was a foul, but it wasn't. It was. It had been allowed to play on. Then a little flick on, Gary Teal gets in. Once again, he might have hoped to take maybe another touch. But he's just tried to stick it first time. Good jump by Hurst there. But you can see here again, an opportunity just to, to go a goal up. And the third of the early chances, and all these coming at nil-nil. Yeah, I don't think this is a real good chance because I do feel there are other options on here. It's an opportunity to shoot, but I thought he should have cut that back where Neil Tarrant was waiting on the edge of the box. But uh, I mean, it's a slight play again. You see here that George Alberts fails to clear it properly. I mean, Reynolds is in there. He's at a difficult angle, but it's not as good a chance as the first two. Rangers then got the first goal. Air United still kept creating. Yeah, I've got this as a half chance. It's a question of whether he kept, 
he makes contact or not. I mean, he's not he could, maybe not going to beat uh, Kloss from there anyway. But you can see that as the ball drops in, Rangers still slack, not clearing their lines, and he gets a touch in there. And, and you know, he's he's got the ball down for himself, and then he miss kicks completely. Is a lot of this to do with the absence of Craig Moore, do you think, the Rangers defence yeah, being so unsettled? That. That's a brilliant pass, by the way. I thought that was a great ball from Tam. It waited perfectly for uh, Glenn has to run onto it there, and I do think he should have done better. I mean, he, he helps create it himself. It's good play between the two strikers. Look at the weight of pass here from Tam. It's superb into the path. All requires a little touch over the keeper, and that's a goal. I mean, that was at 1-0 one, at one to Rangers at that stage, so Rangers, you know, could have been back in the game and equalised, and who knows how the game would have gone at that point. Because the point was that Rangers uh, getting the goals, it relaxed them and it allowed them to go and play and then Ayr completely lost their way. Yeah, I mean, we all love to see attacking football. Is it almost the case that Ayr United were too positive this afternoon? Well, you say too positive, but I mean, it's, the, the, it's nothing to do with being too positive, it's just the fact they couldn't score. Yeah. They just didn't take their chances. I mean, by being positive like that, I'd like to see more Premier Division sides doing that with Rangers and having a real goal like that because as Dick Abaca said, they played four up front, very positive, and what happened, they created openness. Maybe Rangers were a bit slack, but there was opportunities there for Ayr United to go one or two ahead. Now, as soon as Rangers go behind there, you know, they might still have been able to pull it back, but it would have given them a different psychological outlook on the whole thing, having to pull back from being goals behind, the supporters having a go at them, mm -hmm. but the whole thing, but as it was, they ended up getting the goals themselves. Yeah, and your star man was unquestionably Andrei Kinchelskis. I think he was superb again today. I think he's been playing well. Uh, this is one to look for here. Look at the space Newman's got. Watch the run of Van Bronckhurst here. He sees the ball's knocked on. A little flick on. Can Chelsea, who was having a good game, I thought, anyway, very, very assured there. That's, that's composed finishing there. But too much space again. Van Bronckhurst, a little flick. I mean, and that, that's just quite an easy finish. That's the second goal of the match. But uh, by then, it already was problems. But this is, a, this is incredible. Audacious piece of ability there. <laughs> I mean, that's good to see. I don't know if Dick Avocab is exactly you know, cheering at that point. But look, he goes on and it finishes in a goal. I mean, you're not going to do that when you're down 2 now, believe no, me. No, uh, he's lucky he managed to keep his balance there. If he'd fallen flat on his backside, maybe yeah, it'd be I mean, highly embarrassing, but that is a difficult piece of skill. Uh, get, get in the garden tomorrow with your ball, Richard, and see if you can do that, mate. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> My garden's on a slope. I just roll down it. <laughs> make it even harder. What about that? I mean, that was fantastic. Fantastic wasn't it? ball. The defence should have closed them down here, but watch this. They allow him to get the ball down, and then also the question is his pace. That bust, that's Kinchelsis of old. I think he's been producing that form this year. Super header from Billy Dodds. I mean, he's just put it over the keeper, little dipping header under the bar, and by then he had gone to pieces. But he really, it, they should have gone and actually gone to the ball there. Robertson should have gone and closed them there. But look, once he starts going down the wing, tremendous pace, and I think he's getting back to the sort of form he had at Manchester City. He's doing a terrific job for Rangers this year. He plays a position well as a wide midfield player. Dick Avaca took him off recently after about 20, 25 yeah. minutes, and he wasn't happy. But I do think he's been producing good performances, and today I felt he was outstanding. So, what's the big difference? Is it simply he's now attuned to, to football here in Scotland? Yeah, I think so. I think you take a little bit of adjust, but it's also the, the confidence thing. I mean, you don't stand in the ball like that unless you feel you're playing well. And I think that uh, he feels as if he's doing a real good job, and he's fitting in very well with Rangers now. And that's given him that sort of uh, confidence to go and show the ability he's got. And as I say, he plays a, the position well as a wide midfield player, but he's also uh, can take people on, go past them. And that was a great cross. I mean, he's setting up goals for other people too. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned earlier Rob perhaps being a bit harsh on Rangers. You've got to say that overall, that their finishing was clinical, I and mean, it was quite yeah. a display, wasn't it? Yeah, I think Gordon Dia was right in respect that they lost bad goals. It was bad defending, but I have to say that uh, Rangers finishing was clinical. The difference between the two sides. I mean, Ayr have five chances there, no goals. Rangers maybe have about nine chances in the game, seven goals. That that is the difference, and that's that's why. Uh, Rangers are leading the Premier Division and uh, going to win the league, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, you feel sorry for Ayr yeah. and how it went at the start. But John, uh, Gordon Dale, you know, he can't be that happy because what could have been like a fantastic day out for them has turned out to be an embarrassment. Right, well, with Aberdeen on at Cup duty this afternoon, offered Kilmarnock a chance to create some breathing space ahead of Wednesday night's crunch match.